Hi everybody. So I'm filming a video today that I honestly wasn't sure I was going to film. I am going to talk about early miscarriage, chemical pregnancy, and I understand for some people that those things might be something that you don't want to discuss. And for you personally, if that's the case, definitely click out of this video. But it's something that happened to me and I know that it has happened to a lot of other women and so it's my hope that through making this video we can discuss that and we can have a really open and honest communication about chemical pregnancy and early pregnancy loss and pregnancy loss in general while at the same time providing education and for me personally, it's quite cathartic to kind of come and just talk about these things with the knowledge that perhaps I'm, I might help even one other person. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my story and then I'll put a timestamp where you can kind of jump to the end of the video if you just want to know the, the five things that your labor nurse wants you to know about a chemical pregnancy or, or early pregnancy loss. So we can give a timeline about two weeks ago. I was about four days before I was supposed to get my period and I was just kind of feeling like I was pregnant. I could just kind of tell something hormonally was different this month and so just more for my uh, ease of mind than anything else I was like well let me put in a Target pickup order where they have them bring it out to my car and I can just take a pregnancy test and I got the first response like the rapid one minute ones which I didn't even know were a thing and I go ahead and I take the pregnancy test to come back in a minute or two I'm like, oh my gosh this is a clearly positive pregnancy test and my husband's still working from home so I like went downstairs and I showed him and we were both just kind of like, we kind of both wrapped our heads around it and got really excited. The next morning I took another pregnancy test and it was slightly more positive so that was really encouraging. And then because I'd never taken those one hour rapids before, I was like, oh my gosh, what if like I'm not actually pregnant and these are just like faulty. I've never taken these before. So I went and got the clear blue digital one that just says pregnant or not pregnant. I was like, I don't have to interpret anything. Let me take that. So I took that and it said pregnant. I was like, okay, yes, I'm officially pregnant. And I was having symptoms that I kind of get in early pregnancy. I normally suffer from like insomnia and I was feeling nauseated and my breasts were kind of tender. And I was like, dang, like I'm pregnant. This is exciting. And I had called my doctor to schedule my first ultrasound appointment. I scheduled with my endocrinologist to get my thyroid levels checked because we monitor those very closely in the first and second trimester to make sure that they are well regulated. We were just really excited to welcome a third child into our home and really excited for our family to expand. And we were just like, this is it, this is so exciting. Whew. My cycles are anywhere from 28 to 32 days in and around there. And so I found out I was pregnant at 24 days into my cycle. I had started my cycle on June 1st, found out I was pregnant on June 24th. It was Monday the 29th. I was having a little bit of cramping, which is can be really normal in early pregnancy. And I went to the bathroom after dinner and I wiped and I had a little bit of pink tinge bleeding mixed with some mucus and I was like oh gosh okay I am <laughs> bleeding a little bit but we know that bleeding can be really normal in early pregnancy I bled with May's pregnancy which obviously went on to be a, a viable pregnancy of a healthy baby girl I took a pregnancy test that night I only still had the digital ones so it said pregnant still so I was like, okay, I'm still pregnant. So I was feeling a little bit anxious, but also knowing that there was nothing that I could do except for kind of ride it out. And so I just tried to take it easy, put a pad in to kind of monitor how much bleeding we were having and went to bed feeling just anxious. And I don't like not knowing what's gonna happen. I don't think any of us do. This morning I wake up and I head into work and the bleeding is is picking up and 
I'm fortunate that I work with the doctors that I also see as my OBGYN. And so I ran into one of our midwives that morning and I said, you know, I am concerned that I could be having a chemical pregnancy and I would like to go get an HCG drawn, which is the a pregnancy hormone that is in your urine. It's also in your blood. I'd like to go get that drawn so that I can kind of see what that is and then in 48 hours we can draw it again to see if it's doubling. If it's doubling that's a really good indicator that you have a viable pregnancy. If it's go going down or rising very slowly that indicator that the pregnancy is not viable. So she thought that that was a totally reasonable and, and good idea and so I called the office because she said go ahead and call and, and one of our triage nurses could could put it in. My friend who was actually Holden's labor and delivery nurse was the one who I spoke with and she was like like I can keep you updated and I was like you can just text me like I'm at work so I was able to go downstairs and get my blood drawn really quickly and check my thyroid levels as well as the HCG and then just waiting to kind of hear back from that and a few hours later I, I heard back from my friend the nurse at the triage and she said your HCG is negative you're not pregnant like it wasn't even that I like that it was falling it had fallen so much that it was a negative pregnancy test so I I wasn't pregnant anymore and God, I didn't think I was gonna cry I it's weird right because had I not taken that pregnancy test, I never would have known. I would have just thought, oh, my cycle is a bit delayed. My period is, is a few days later, but still within my realm of normal because I started bleeding at 32 days into that cycle. And we were excited and we were joyful and we were feeling hopeful for this new baby and this new life. And we were appreciative of the fact that we were going to grow our family. And then all of a sudden, I just wasn't pregnant. And it almost feels like it didn't happen at all, right? I just had my period. It was maybe a little bit heavier. And it's over now. This was a week ago. I think the important thing for me, for myself, is to acknowledge that there is this loss of a dream of a child that you create in your mind when you find out that you're pregnant. And it's okay to mourn and to grieve that dream. I'm gonna now move on. I'm gonna collect myself and talk a little bit about what we know about chemical pregnancies. Some people may have never even heard of the term chemical pregnancy, but a chemical pregnancy is just a really early miscarriage. And it occurs before the fifth week of pregnancy, and it occurs when we have the sperm and the egg came together. And typically, there was some sort of chromosomal abnormality, genetic abnormality that was incompatible with life. So the fertilized egg is unable to implant. Now, even though the egg does not fully implant, the fertilized egg itself works on making those pregnancy hormones, that HCG, trying to get everything ready for it to implant, and that's why you get that early pregnancy test, even though the egg does not have a chance to fully implant, which means that you wouldn't be able to see a gestational sac on ultrasound or a heartbeat on ultrasound or anything of that nature. You might be able to see a thickened lining of the uterus. Chemical pregnancies typically don't have a lot of symptoms because there's not a ton of those hormones that make some of our symptoms occur. For many women, the only symptom that they notice is a missed period or a period that comes a bit later. And sometimes these later periods are a little bit heavier, often accompanied by more cramping than normal as your body works on getting rid of the extra uterine lining and everything that it's put together to help support your pregnancy. Chemical pregnancies are definitely found more now than they used to be because of the advances in home pregnancy tests where they are able to detect very small amounts of HCG. Chemical pregnancies account for about 75% of miscarriages. So they happen more often than we know about, 
but that doesn't mean that them happening affects how you feel about your own personally. There are lots of feelings that are accompanied by a chemical pregnancy and early pregnancy loss. And all of them are totally acceptable and okay. Clearly, I'm feeling sad and I'm feeling grief over the loss of a dream of a child who would have been born in March, who would have been our third, who we were excited about. And I can't compare my grief or how I'm feeling to anybody else. You might experience a chemical pregnancy and feel relief. It wasn't a good time for you to be pregnant and that's okay. You might be angry at your body, your body who you feel has failed you, who you have been trying to get pregnant for months and months and months and undergone fertility treatments and that's okay. However you're feeling is okay. And I don't know if this is the culture in other countries and definitely feel free to let me know down below, but in America, I feel like there's always a really big push to wait until you're past your first trimester, which is where we see the biggest instances of pregnancy loss and miscarriage. But by not telling anybody, at least for me personally, in my first trimester, when I experience a loss, feel like I have to experience it alone. So I had already told a few close friends about what was going on, and it was really beneficial to be able to talk with them about when I was bleeding before I knew and to get their reassurance and to have people check in on me later and just see how I was doing. So if you have experienced a chemical pregnancy or an early pregnancy loss and you feel like you have nobody to talk to, I'm so sorry. I hope that you find somebody that you can talk to about it. And I think that we can all support each other in the comment section down below if you feel the need to share your story. So if you suffer an early pregnancy loss, I want you to know that chemical pregnancies, early losses that are caused by chromosomal abnormalities can happen to anybody. It's not predictive of you not being able to conceive or not being able to carry a pregnancy. That being said, if you're having reoccurrent early pregnancy loss or pregnancy loss in general, that would be a good time to kind of meet with your doctor and you guys can look at your cases, check your hormone levels, and make sure that we get everything as supportive as we can be to help support a pregnancy. Some of the really easy things that we can fix is if you have a thyroid disorder. By the way, my thyroid was normal when I got it checked out, so that was not our issue there. If you have a, a clotting disorder that you don't know about, uncontrolled diabetes uh, could be another thing that might affect a viability of, of a pregnancy early on. So making sure that you're in good health can be really important. And having a preconception visit before you start trying to get pregnant can also be beneficial in making sure that our body is ready to support a pregnancy. If you experience a chemical pregnancy, definitely consult with your doctor, but in general, it is okay to try and conceive with your next cycle. A chemical pregnancy is more like a regular cycle than a later miscarriage would be, even though emotionally it might not be. The most important thing that I want you to know about chemical pregnancy and pregnancy loss in general is that it is not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. It's not because you didn't take that prenatal vitamin one day. It's not because you didn't drink enough water or because you were exercising. I think that's really important to know and to hear and to continue to hear because it's really easy for us to blame ourselves for things that go wrong, even when they're totally outside of our control. I hope this video reached some of you guys and was helpful for some of you guys. Definitely leave stories down below in the comments if you want to talk about your own experience with pregnancy loss. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.